Israeli legal scholar, Professor Eugene Kantorovich. Uh, Eugene, uh, I was in uh, central London on Saturday and there was a, now, it's a, like a weekly tradition. Uh, most of our main cities have these pro-Palestinian marches sneaking through uh, the centre of them. Uh, this one, though, it being the October the 7th anniversary, uh, this one was very special. Uh, and they had all these people, like, uh, dressed in parachutes. You know, to celebrate the fact that Hamas came over on uh, on parachutes, didn't they? And so hang gliders and all this. People with parachutes on their backs. Uh, people holding signs from the river to the sea. Uh, the tenor of this demonstration was that we should celebrate those brave warriors of Hamas. Uh, you know, who so courageously broke into Israel one year ago. So my question to you is, why is it? We know what happened on October the 7th. It barely bears thinking about, you know. Women were raped, babies were beheaded, uh, more than 1,200 people just brutally shot and killed, murdered, tortured. We know what happened on that terrible day. Why is it, do you think, that on the streets of a country like Britain, uh, that there are people celebrating the perpetrators of that awful atrocity? Why does this happen? Um, I think <laughs> what Hamas really revealed, perhaps the worst thing about October 7th, the thing that Israelis are still grappling with the most is not that so many people want to kill the Jews, not that Hamas wants to kill the Jews, but that so many people are actually supporting that. And Hamas's deep and brilliant insight is they knew that th throughout much of the West, there's this buried anti-Semitism, which just needs a signal to come out. They just need someone to take the first step forward and conduct the first massacre, and everyone's going to be turned on, and and that's what's that that's what's happening. They've tapped in to dark, deep desires in a, a shocking number of of people, and what really infuriates them is that this is not a Holocaust story. Everybody likes the Holocaust because you get to both have the you know. <laughs> Well, feel bad I'm, not, I'm not quite yeah, sure about that, but I know where you <laughs> carry on. <laughs> you get to both feel bad about it, yeah. but the story is two thirds of the Jews of Europe were killed. Yeah. So you can you can feel bad and you can wring your hands, but it was pure Jewish victimness, right? Uh, here, the Jews said we're not going to be victims anymore. So it turns out that many who might like Jews as victims don't like them as people who defend themselves. Interesting, yeah. And when you see Jews saying, no, we're not going to let this be a Holocaust story. We're going to let this be a story of survival, of national salvation. Yeah. Uh, then, all of a sudden, it's not funny because the Jews are not behaving like they are supposed to in the script. Right. They're not going to their deaths. I hadn't thought about that, Eugene. Very good point uh, that people, uh, they're prepared to accept Jews as victims, but when Jews stand up for themselves, and they've got every bloody right to right now, uh, they don't like it. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this. We're going to play this now uh, in the background, but uh, this is to give you a flavour of what's going on in this country. This was the other day, uh, p people in Brighton, south coast town here in uh, Britain, uh, set up a kind of temporary Jewish uh, memorial to the October the 7th. Look at this guy. This guy's oh. smashing it to pieces. Look at this. Look at this. Uh, he's, uh, he's shouting uh, words that I can't really say. Uh, on a family radio show, TV show, but uh, you can imagine. But uh, I mean, look at this, Eugene. I don't know if you can see this. But and I'm 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 not seeing anybody okay. stopping. Yeah, the no one is stopping. No one is stopping him. Oh. And, and, and uh, oh, but this mindless anti-Semitism. I mean, again, I mean, you've addressed it uh, already. But what 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 beats me? What baffles me? is that in the past year, since October the 7th, the worst slaughter of Jewish people since the Holocaust in the Second World War, more than 1,200 of them, possibly 1,400, uh, 100, 150 still down in those hellhole tunnels beneath Gaza, uh, enduring God knows what uh, kind of... 
uh, torments. Uh, and uh, our reaction in this country is an explosion of anti-Semitic incidents, anti-Semitic hate crimes. Explain that. So, look, I think there's gonna, it's going to take a lot of forms. Uh, there's the Islamist anti-Semitism, which is just it's you know the direct Middle Eastern version injected uh, into the UK. And then I think if one watches enough BBC, uh, one would believe the worst things about the Jews. I think the non-stop repetition of blood libels, like real medieval blood libels, uh, Jews are killing the children of Gaza, uh, is, of course, going to... Uh, stir up uh, hatred uh, of Jews based on completely uh, completely false uh, premises. Um, and then, you know, so, so, so those are some potential, uh, those are some potential reasons. Um, and I would wonder, you know, how many uh, of, the, of the people doing this are from a Middle Eastern background. Uh, and, uh, you know, between those and BBC viewers, I think you've accounted for all of it. Yeah, I mean, what, what's your take on the BBC? It seems to be, uh, you know, the pro-Palestinian broadcasting company. I mean, the, you it, know, it's one thing to be biased, but to simply repeat blood libels, that is to say dangerous, false accusations of mass murder, mm -hmm. uh, which are designed to incite anti-Semitism, is, is, is a massive capitulation of responsibility. It's hard for me to understand what's going on there. Well, I think at the BBC there is a point, and they won't, they'll hate this, but uh, what else can we do given the circumstances, given we see their coverage of the Gaza conflict? Uh, only recently, uh, uh, more than a 1,000 independent lawyers uh, produced a report which revealed that using the BBC's own impartiality rules, that the BBC had broken those rules more than 1,500 times in the past year. Uh, we have three major Jewish groups, including the British Board uh, of Jewish Deputies and our chief rabbi, all saying, all demanding that we have a judicial review of the BBC's coverage because, OK, obviously the BBC's coverage is anti-Israel, but at one, what point does anti-Israel become anti-Semitic? There are people within our state broadcaster, Eugene, who are anti-Semitic. There's no doubt in my mind about that. Yours? Uh, no, I think, I think it's quite clear from the content that they produce that there's a, a real deliberate effort uh, to defame the Jewish state. Uh, yeah. in, indeed. Uh, and uh, a final question, really. Uh, you know, we're all holding our breath, so Israel will retaliate uh, to, against last week's uh, ballistic missile attack, 181 ballistic missiles. Uh, fired at Israel. I think people should remember these missiles are the size of a bus. They're massive. They're massive. It's not just a tiny little missile. 181 fired at the big cities of Israel. Israel quite rightly will respond. Uh, what? I mean, I don't know how much you want to reveal <laughs> or, or how much you want to discuss this, but in your view, what form will that retaliation take? So re really, these plans are fortunately not shared with me. But uh, again, I, th I think I want to put it in context of what's at stake here. It's not about retaliation. It's not about they shot missiles at us, we're going to sh shoot missiles about at them. Uh, it's not about last week. Iran has been behind, uh, behind Hamas and Hezbollah terrorism against Israel for decades. Iran is behind the war in the north, and Iran is behind the war in the south. And Iran is poised to acquire nuclear weapons with which it has said it will destroy the Jewish state. So the goal is preventing that. And, and they, you know, that may require significantly you know, damaging those facilities. Yeah, that's my view. I think uh, Netanyahu should go for their nuclear facilities. If he goes for their oil, it will uh, produce a chain reaction uh, and Iran will probably attack Saudi Arabia and we'll all get rocketing oil prices all over the world. So go for that's it. That's likely to happen anyway. But I can tell you, the, um, according to Israeli news reports, the uh, Biden-Harris administration have asked Israel to not strike specific Iranian targets in exchange for some vague protections of uh, promises of diplomatic protection. So Israel has the Iron Dome, which to protect itself from missiles, and uh, Tehran has the Biden-Harris administration. But uh, if I were in charge of strategy, I would just take whatever targets 
Biden and Harris said are too important to strike and start with those. Yeah, exactly right. They're like a reverse barometer. Totally agree. Eugene, uh, really good to talk to you. Come on again soon. That was uh, Professor Eugene Kantorovich, Israeli legal scholar.